So this evening I have Brandon Amiot, who is the president of Fierte Simcoe Pride. We're going to discuss why Pride is important in Simcoe County, and more importantly, what are all the big events coming up this summer, from the Pride Parade to all sorts of Pride activities happening within the county, but right here in Barry. more importantly. Brandon's with me for the hour. Stay tuned. Welcome. And tonight, as you know, I have Brandon Amiot, who is the president of Fierte Simcoe Pride. And we're talking about not just what's happening with Pride this summer, but all about, about Pride, what's going on in Barrie, Simcoe. He knows all about it because he is the president of Simcoe Pride. Fierte Simcoe Pride. Welcome. Thank you, Thank you Brandon. Haven't, we were just talking before we went on air that you were on the show, but before it was this uh, uh, this particular set yeah it's it's been a long time yeah. but it's good to be back and you know I, I'm digging the set yeah it's yeah. nice eh? it's very I've got a great studio to work with I yeah. mean Deanne McCollum is just wonderful mm -hmm. she's been a real inspiration for me over the years so um, and before we went on air we were talking about when we first met <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while <laughs> nine years ago yeah nine years ago Wow yeah. Yeah, because yeah. you were like, I think it was like 14 years old. I'm not giving away your age. It, right? it's, it's been a long well, time. Yeah, we'll say time. that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 14. So you've come a long way, and you've been interested in events in Pride for years and years and years and years. Yeah, I got, st I got started young, um, so it's kind of unique in that, you know, I'm approaching my, like, 10th anniversary of activism, as we call it. Um, right. And most people who are reaching that are in their 30s and 40s when they when they reach that 10 year and 15 year, uh, but I'm gonna be in my mid 20s when I hit that, so it's it's rather unique, uh, you know. So uh, it's it's interesting because I've almost, I've got a renewed sense of commitment. Mm -hmm. I haven't been stuck in the same place in my work in the over the last 10 years, it's been different jobs. Right. So I, I always feel like, you know, I never stagnate, and that's always the hope. Um, so I've been president now for almost three years, so yeah. And you've taken Simcoe Pride to, new levels because you've added the fear tea which is mm -hmm. interesting you know it's good to have the bilingual bilingual name because we know that there's got to be some anglophones and francophones within the lgbt community you also are involved beyond simcoe well, myself, Aren't yes. Are you international? So we, so Fierte Simco Pride, uh, since 2013, has been a member of uh, Fierte Canada Pride, uh, which is the uh, National LGBTI uh, Organizers Association, right. and then uh, Interpride. Um, and in fact, one of our board members, uh, soon to be outgoing board members, uh, Andrew Baker, he is the co-president of Interpride now and was formerly the vice president of, of FCP, Fierte Canada Pride. So we're very involved on a, on a, on a larger level, beyond our, our you know, the, the borders of Simcoe right. County, so to speak. So, so what does that entail, though, the Canada Pride? So how, do, mm. how, do, how does Fierte Simcoe Pride mix with a national, mm. a national pride? Like, are there meetings? Do you have, like, a Canada-wide pride parade somewhere? So, you don't uh, march from yeah, coast yeah, to coast no. waving um, the pride flag. So uh, as an organization, you know, we, we have members of Fierte Canada Pride and Interpride members, and uh, as a member of FCP, you automatically become a member of Interpride. Okay. Um, so essentially, it's just made up of pride organizations or LGBT organizations throughout the country. Uh, I know FCP now has uh, over 70 members, and there's about 125 prides in Canada, so that's pretty substantial. Um, and I've sat on, a, I sit on a few committees, um, politics and pride being one of them. Um, and we have uh, conferences every year and AGMs. And uh, in 2017, we introduced uh, the Fierte Canada Pride Festival. So every few years, we award one city, one pride with the festival uh, to have a national celebration and human rights conference. Uh, so the first host was uh, Montreal in 2017, and Winnipeg in 2020 is hosting it. So, so every, three, every three years? Every three to four years, years. Uh, similar to World Pride, uh, which this year is happening in New York. Um, I heard that, because yeah. it's 50 years since... 50 years since Stonewall, Stonewall um, yeah. which we will definitely be tying into our celebrations as well. Uh, Stonewall is largely credited with being, you know, uh, kind of the start of our modern movement, so we'll be sure to commemorate that, among other things. And that happened in, in New York. In New York, so, you know, yeah, the, the, so. the way that they put it is it's, it's coming back to where it started. Uh, and their theme is millions of moments of pride. 
Um, uh, what was that again? Million? Millions of moments. Okay. So it's all about all the moments that have happened over the last half century. Um, it, it's about uh, pride. It's about human rights. Uh, it's about love and passion and art. All these all these different things coming right. together for a festival with millions of people in New York and uh, Copenhagen's hosting the next one in uh, 2021, I believe. So so it's really it's yeah. become a global yeah. festivity, um, and we're happy to be part of those organizations. Um, and we don't just do celebration. We we sit on. Um, there's a human rights committee uh, with Interpride that helps fund um, LGBT organizations in countries throughout the world who are struggling um, right. or in places where uh, you know it might be more volatile. So, as an organization, we 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 always take a balance with advocacy um, and celebration because those are both part of Pride. There seems to be a global movement, though. I mean, when you think of what's happening in the U.S. with um, the trans ban in the military, for example. Um, a, a president that is, I, I mean, it, it would appear to be anti-LGBTQ. Uh, when you hear what's happening in, in the Ukraine, when you hear what's happening in Russia, and most recently what's happening in Brunei with, um, with um, the Sharia law there where they're going to stone people who commit adultery who are gay. and uh, How do you think that impacts... Does that give you more of an impetus to, to be more um, fervent in, in your activism, as you mentioned uh, at the beginning of the show? Or does that dampen everything somewhat when you, when you know governments are apparently swinging more, more to the uh, right than the left? Hmm. I think it depends. Um, I, I think it definitely it highlights that there will always be a need. Uh, for this okay. sort of activism, um, and that that's never gone away, and you know organizations come and go, but the community is always here. Um, it will always be fighting. Um, as an organization, we very much work with our partners like FCP and Interpride to address uh, to or to work uh, towards supporting communities globally. But then there's also stuff we can be doing at home. Mm -hmm. um, it really starts at home. Um, you know, it's all the whole principle of um, think global, act local. Uh, so there are ways locally that we can improve uh, human rights and uh, community here. Uh, so we have to, you know, we have to take that balance, help help globally, but also uh, focusing on local. And I think what we've seen is that uh, we're we're necessary now more than ever. Um, we absolutely still need pride. That'll that'll never be that'll never go away. Right. Um, so you know, I think. It, the, now is the time to kick it into gear. Um, this isn't the time to shy away, I think. Um, and that's that's something that we're definitely doing as an organization. We know that in Barrie, the city council recently elected Keenan Alwyn, mm -hmm. who, is, uh, who is definitely uh, an ally of the LGBT community. And I understand that he has been very instrumental in pushing a lot of not a lot of not a lot of an agenda for it, but certainly very supportive in bringing a lot of concerns from the LGBT community uh, w within Barry Council, which is uh, which is interesting. Um, just just back a bit on politics, and it's not a political show, but I just wanted to ask you what your thoughts were on on Mayor Pete or Peter Buttigieg, who is running mm -hmm. for mayor. He's from Indiana, South Bend. I think he's the mayor of South Bend, yep, or South was, Bend, Indiana. and he's very much. Um, an activist and, mm -hmm. and talks about him and his husband and, and they're, they're talking about adopting children and everything and he seems to be like almost the antagonistic um, presidential candidate for mm -hmm. 2020 in terms of he, he's like the opposite of Trump and Pence and do you think that that's he, he seems to be making a lot of headway yeah, definitely. I mean, I know uh, some national polling has put him in third place, which, uh, given where he started, is quite substantial. Um, you know, we saw him embrace his partner openly on national television. Right. That's that's something that a year ago we couldn't have imagined. So right. I think, you know, regardless of whether or not uh, he's successful, um, I think he's been successful and at least showing that, you know, uh, the 2S LGBTQ community uh, can also be political, can be, uh, can hold power in different places, and we do in in different ways locally, uh, you know, provincially, nationally, and globally. Um, and I think, you know, 
it's always great to have people who can champion policies um, that grow community, that support community, um, you know, whether they're allies or whether they're members of the community. So we're, we're, we're seeing that. There is always that glimmer of hope. Um, and, and we have, you know, many openly elected officials throughout Canada and, and here um, who, are, who are doing that work. Well, and we've had Kathleen Wynne, who was mm -hmm. definitely out in the LGBT, 2S LGBT. And, we, and, and while we're talking about 2S, I've just heard that recently because it, it always was LGBTQ2. Mm -hmm. And then uh, um, uh, one of the groups in Toronto, Two Spirit Community, said, we're doing 2S because, after all, the Indigenous folks were here first. Mm -hmm. So in recognition of that, so we've started, I've started using that 2S LGBTQ. And uh, it's interesting that you've said it. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, and it makes sense, doesn't it? That, that the indigenous community, it's a recognition, it's part, I guess, of the truth and reconciliation piece is that even within the LGBT community, that's part of it as well. Yeah, definitely. Uh, as an organization, a good chunk of our board is Indigenous and Two-Spirit. Uh, we also partner a lot with uh, Two-Spirit groups and organizations in the area, Indigenous organizations. Um, this year, there'll be the, during our festivities, there'll be uh, the second annual Niche Manadok uh, Two-Spirit powwow in Springwater Park, and the youth have worked really, really hard on that. Um, so as an organization, we always make sure that we have to put um, I have to put that first, um, acknowledging that uh, Indigenous peoples, uh, particularly here the Anishinaabeg and the Haudenosaunee, have been caretakers for this land for years, um, and their understandings of gender and sexuality uh, are, are um, you know, have been around for thousands of years in their acceptance and embracing of uh, diverse communities within their community. Um, so. Uh, you know, even uh, our trans march in Aurelia, two sphere people lead the way every time. Um, so that's that's very we, we we think that's an important uh, principle that we have within our organization. The um, you mentioned a powwow, which probably for some of our viewers, mm -hmm. they might not recognize a powwow. What's that about? What can you just? Uh, you know, essentially a powwow. Um, it, it, it's a celebration of culture. Um, you know, some powwows are competition powwows, as they call them, and then there's others that are more traditional. And this one, uh, this one specifically, is about celebrating uh, two spirit community, um, a resurgence of two spirit community after years of uh, colonialism, kind of pushing that down. Um, mm -hmm. You know, two spirit people were were kind of the first to be thrown under the bus um, uh, when settlers arrived um, in in these lands. Um, so the, the powwow is about resurgence. It also, I, I know it, in, in the event, they mentioned that it, it's also about raising awareness mm. about issues facing in community, uh, particularly related to missing and murdered indigenous women, um, related to different violence and, and different barriers that exist for two-spirit community. So uh, the event, again, balances that celebration and that advocacy, but it's, it's it's tremendous to see um, this resurgence of two-spirit people throughout Turtle Island, um, and it's been really heartening for me to be able to connect with my culture too. So yeah. I know other people experiencing right. that as because well. Because you're you are indigenous. Yeah, I'm Haudenosaunee. Yeah, yeah, so it's it's interesting. And Turtle Island, we talked about that yeah. before we went on here. Yeah, yeah. Because I had no clue when somebody said to me, um, "Well, you know, you live on Turtle Island." And I'm going, uh, Barry's not on Turtle Island. I don't know if it's an island. Mm -hmm. And then you explained that very nicely, that it's, it's North, well, it's more than just North America. It's mm -hmm. North and South America together make Turtle Island? More or less. You, you can look pictures on the internet, but uh, it, it also relates to many of our creation stories, right. um, which, which talk about a, a great turtle carrying us uh, on its back, um, sustaining life. Uh, and that's why it's so important. Uh, you know, I, I know in our festival we even infuse that the concept of we need to take care of the land we're on. Right. Um, and, and you know, we've gone to a few World Water Day celebrations at uh, Rama to talk about how there's a connection between pride and human rights and water um, and land. So we're very much uh, about trying to build a more sustainable uh, festival mm. um, and, and, and reduce our footprint uh, and take care of the land that we're on. Um, so I know this year at uh, some larger events we'll be having, um, and we'll get into that, uh, we're looking at having things like water bottle refill stations um, to make sure we're not littering um, because, you know, plastic, single-use plastic water bottles are a huge issue for our yeah, environment. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. any little way that we can try to create a, a more sustainable environment, whether it's physically or in terms of the uh, the, the 
philosophy of how we operate. It's interesting that you mentioned love because Again, just to make reference to Mayor Pete or Peter Buttigieg down in the U.S., the Democratic presidential nom uh, um, candidate. Candidate, yeah, he's mm -hmm. not a nominee yet, or might not be, but who knows? But anyway, he talks about bringing in a more inclusive, diverse America with mm -hmm. a democracy that's more reflective of harmony and love. And he speaks in those. The language he uses is very much what you're using, and it's interesting because it's such a contrast to what's there now, mm -hmm. as opposed to what's coming. And do you think that that pride, part of the pride movement, is bringing back an acceptance and 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 diversity, but inclusivity, but bringing in? You hear often, love the one you're with, or everyone should be free to love who they love, and without prejudice, mm -hmm. without without discriminatory stigma, and all that kind of thing. Is that sort of still there within pride movements? I think so. Um, you know, we, we live in difficult times, and in, in a way we always do, um, but that love piece always has to be there um, in what we're doing. Um, you know, the activism I've done over the last eight years um, and the, the work that Fierte Simcoe Pride has done over eight years has been out of love for community, uh, for making a safer and more inclusive community. Um, but it has to be, you know, love, love is so important. Um, but it has to be backed up with action. The best way you can show that you love someone uh, or that um, you're trying to make things better is by you know, backing up your words with action. And that's mm -hmm. you know, what we're about. Um, the, the, the language is important. The language we use is important. Um, but we have to make sure that you know, we're, we're implementing policies or doing work that's addressing you know, uh, social inequality and barriers, uh, that's making our festival more inclusive and our organization more inclusive, uh, recognizing that you know, um, you know, organizations that have been around a long time sometimes have structural issues that they need to address. And so from starting as a grassroots organization, we've really tried to build from mm -hmm. the ground up an organization that has those ideals built into its structure uh, and built into its philosophy. We were talking about, um, uh, we got to the studio earlier, so mm -hmm. we were talking about Lakeside Upper Deck yeah. and, and the struggles that that uh, particular venue has had since, uh, well, I think it opened well, last September 2018. Yeah. It's not even been a year and, and it's been struggling. Um, the gay community in Barrie didn't seem to support it as what we initially thought. I mean, there was a lot of controversy when it first started. Um, but is Barry truly ready for uh, a gay bar, if you will, that that's going to be sustained by the community? What's what's missing? Do you think? I, I'm not. Yeah. I don't want to. No, yeah, yeah. I, I don't. I don't say you have mm -hmm. the answers. I'm just trying to, you know, as as one of the largest pride organizations in Simcoe County, you would might have an opinion on mm -hmm. that. That's what I'm looking for. So I mean, I haven't been around forever, of no. course. Um, I'm still young. But I, I uh, so I, I have, uh, I'm studying political science uh, and media studies in my degree. So some of my research has been really focused on local LGBT community um, through gathering stories from people. We ha we've had gay bars here before. Yeah. It was not yes. the first. No. You know, uh, there was there was the spa at Dusty's Den in the early 2000s. C'est la vie, of course, for the longest time. On Collier, time. the old um, uh, opera city. Yeah, well, and it moved house. around a few times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. there was um, uh, the spot, Spotlight, and, and now this location. Um, this isn't, the, 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 the fact that it's struggling isn't uh, unique to Barrie. Uh, we see bar, you know, LGBT bars, gay bars around the world, well, around the world, but mainly North America struggling. Uh, part of its economy. Um, and the other part's demographics, really. Right, right. Um, people don't want to drink as much anymore. They don't want alcohol-centric events. The data shows that. Uh, people want spaces for community. They still want to be able to dance and have fun and just let loose for an evening. Uh, but the, the, our community's changed a lot. So the spaces like Glad Day Bookshop in Toronto are incredibly popular because, you know, on an evening you can grab a drink. But that's not the focus. Mm -hmm. You can get books, you can get food. There is, you know, dancing and, and community space. Things like that do a lot better because it, get, it builds a space where everyone can come to it. Um, and, and of course, you know, we know that our communities struggled with alcohol and addictions, um, alcoholism and addictions, mm -hmm. uh, as a result of a lot of historical traumas. Um, it was a coping mechanism, but our community is shifting. Um, and so we need to make sure that our spaces shift with it. So I, I don't know what the answer is, but I think looking to spaces that have community input leading how it's built. 
um, and making sure the community gets their say in how the space looks and changing it as necessary, but creating something that is accessible um, is really, really important. So I think that that's probably the direction, not just us, but all other places need to go in uh, if we want to build those sort of spaces. I noticed that with coffee shops, for example. Mm -hmm. When you think of even coffee shops like Tim Hortons and Starbucks, how they've added on uh, cafe style where you can actually mm -hmm. come and sit. They put fireplaces and nice chairs to sit at and make it much more welcoming so that it's just not having a coffee sitting at a bar stool, but it's having a coffee and having a conversation in a, in a, in a, in a space that's welcoming. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that in Toronto, I was in Toronto a couple of weeks ago and I went to a comedy club. It, it happened to be a gay comedy club. Yeah. But you're right, the focus was less on, on, on drinking and more on socializing. Couches, more relaxed atmosphere, less standing up, you know, so people could actually engage in conversation, which was nice. And it wasn't all gay comedians. It was, mm -hmm. there, was some, there was some straight comedians. It wasn't male or female. It was just a mix. Uh, and, uh, and so I think that, you're right, I think that is the trend more mm -hmm. than going in and being crowded and lights and music and you can't hear, the, you can't hear who you're talking to, what they're saying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And, 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 and you're right, it's, it's with pride programs and, and uh, uh, the campaigns that the MAD organization has done, it's, yeah, there's Uber and there's taxis, but it's, it's frowned upon now, I mean, coming out of a bar drunk. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's not sort of like socially, frown, it's more socially frowned upon, I think is what I'm saying. Yeah, I think, um, you know, one of the events that Fierte Cinco Pride does is we do coffee meets, coffee yep. socials right. uh, in, you know, in Midland, in Aurelia, in Wasaga Beach, and in Barrie. Uh, that is, that kind of goes to that whole point is people want community care. They want to they want to build connections. Exactly. And that's one of the best ways to address, um, uh, you know, social health issues mm -hmm. um, is for building community. So, um, it, our model, of course, is in a, a not-for-profit way, but even for-profit corporations uh, or, or social enterprises of the LGBT community should be kind of looking to those um, and saying, well, how can we actually benefit community? Yeah. Um, you know, and, and that's, that I think that will really change or revolutionize the way uh, that we ha hold events and hold space. Yeah, um, Morgan Sheridan from uh, Ever Jones has started a... Uh, uh, an LGBT business community called Professionals in Practice, mm -hmm. and they have the, um, the spirit catcher in sort of rainbow colors. Yeah. And he is uh, quite adamant that there's a lot of interest in, in, in those companies and venues, businessmen, that do our allies or are owned by, uh, by uh, folks that are uh, in the LGBT, 2S LGBT community. But it's interesting because in Toronto, you have that um, what's it called, the uh, pink pages, mm -hmm. so that so that folks know what what businesses do support or our allies. Yeah, and it's becoming quite quite interesting in, in as much as there's a need for that. Like I like if you want to support a gay a business that is an ally of the LG, of the two S LGBT community, travel agent for example, or restaurants or bars. Mm -hmm. Uh, they don't have to be specific, do they? They don't have to be waving the rainbow flag. They can still be an ally without waving, without waving the rainbow flag, I'm saying. Would you? I think, yeah, I, well, it's really important for spaces to be visible. Uh, one of the reasons we do the coffee meets yeah. is also there's a visibility aspect. It's we're taking space back, uh, space that's often denied to us uh, or spaces that aren't welcoming. Um, so, you know, rainbow stickers, things like that, great. Um, and I think they do signify to people who are walking right. by, okay. like, oh, I can go here. That's a safer place to go. Um, but building those relationships, it's really all about the actions again. Um, so having that visible sticker is something. But even without the sticker, you can still be an ally. Um, you don't, an ally does, like, you, a sticker doesn't make you an ally. No, um, no, a flag no. doesn't make you an ally. It's all about your actions, your everyday actions, um, and the work that you're doing uh, to give space to community and to support community. So, yeah, you can absolutely be an ally and not have a sticker on your business. Uh, there are other ways of promoting and, and doing that work. Uh, in all your years of activism, are you seeing real change happening in Barrie, for example, 
for the 2S LGBT community? Do you see it actually, is it visible to you as, as someone who walks around and does business, is going to school here, mm -hmm. is living here? Do you feel comfortable more so today than you did when, say, nine years ago, eight years ago, five years ago even? It's a mixed bag. <laughs> uh, I'll put it that way. Uh, I think the show is an example. I mean, uh, you know, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, maybe even 10 years ago, we wouldn't have been having these discussions, uh, you know, on television, right. per se. And right. if we were, it would have been framed in a very different way. Uh, we wouldn't have been allotted that sort of time. Um, and even the, the fact that, that these discussions are being had in the broader community by municipalities. Um, I know the town of Innisfil, uh, just two years ago, ha created a gender neutral facility policy. That wouldn't have been a discussion without the work of Fierte Simcoe Pride, without the work of the Gilbert Center and other organizations and local community members in Innisfil pushing for that sort of change. Mm. So we have power. Uh, we always have. It's just that now we're realizing it and we're being able to use it. So in, in that sense, things have changed. Um, there are some real systemic issues we still need to address. Um, the fact that such a large portion of the trans community in this county makes well below the poverty line. Mm. Um, there are health care issues uh, for, you know, uh, people living with HIV, for trans folks and, uh, you know, uh, for sex workers. There's all these different issues uh, and those will take a bit more work. Um, and there's work we can do within our own communities to address those, but uh, some of the work also has to come with um, with political change, uh, and that's why, as an organization, we're nonpartisan, but we're very much political. Uh, you know, in the provincial election, we did a questionnaire asking about these issues. Uh, stay tuned for the federal election; we'll be doing some work around <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah. Um, but it's important to to not give up. Um, and you know, if I gave up, I wouldn't have made it eight years. Um, there are other community members who are doing some great work outside of our organization, um, who are you know, really the changing spaces uh, in very interesting ways uh, in, in little rural communities and larger communities. Um, you know, just, just a few weeks ago, we held a Trans Day Visibility event um, at a local coffee shop. It was, it was an open mic. It was very flexible, packed house, you know, like 75 people. Um, that wouldn't have happened a year or two ago, and people wouldn't have felt so willing to be vulnerable and to be visible. So things have, I think, like I said, it's a mixed bag. Mm. Uh, there's some systemic issues we still need to address um, internally and externally, um, but we're, in a, we're going in a good direction. Uh, we just need to keep up. Um, we need to keep pushing harder, not being afraid to be bold, I think. Um, and so that's what we're going to keep doing. Do you see this as a generational change in terms of, like, you're a young man. Mm -hmm. There's are there older uh, members within the 2S LGBT community that are also activists? Absolutely. Within, okay. I think. Um, so it's just not it's just not your generation, but there no. is. There, it's there a are, community okay. shift. I okay. Think. Okay. Good. Good um, point. Yeah. We, you know, I think building those cross generational paths is good too. Uh, that's one of the things we lost, uh, especially with the AIDS epidemic in the 90s. We lost a lot of our activists. You know, we think now, how old would Freddie Mercury be? How old would all those people be who we lost in the 90s or lost due to violence or other uh, manners? Um, how old would they be now and what work would they have achieved? You know, what, where would Harvey Milk be now? Yeah. So we lost a lot of people. And now we're experiencing a generation of people we didn't lose because we're doing work and because people fought for us. So now um, it's like, what do we do next? What do we do with that power? Uh, so we, we need to be building connections between, um, you know, senior members of our communities who've been around forever doing this work and younger community members to build, um, to build connections that bring us all forward um, so no one gets left behind. Um, so that's, you know, that, that, that sort of stuff is changing. Yeah, with the current government in Ontario, you sometimes wonder, mm -hmm. they, they seem to be in somewhat mirroring what's going on in the U.S. in terms of very right-wing politics and uh, recently with their budget cutting a lot of health services out, um, which affect, of course, uh, not just the trans community or the, the gay community, affects us all in, 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 uh, mm -hmm. in Ontario. Anyway, when we come back, we have to go to break, but when we come back, we're going to ask uh, Brandon all about what's happening this summer for Pride festivities what Fear T Simcoe Pride is up to and maybe get some tidbits of what we might be seeing. So stay tuned, we'll be right back with Brandon. Sweeten 
my coffee with your morning kiss. We're back with uh, Brandon Amiot, who is the president of Fairty Simcoe Pride. And uh, the first half of the show, we really talked about a lot of interesting stuff that's going on, but there is a lot more interesting stuff going on this summer, isn't there? <laughs> There is. Aren't there? Yeah. Aren't yes. there? Aren't there? Yeah. Aren't there? There will be, um, and of course, I've got, I've got, yeah. I've got thousands of things going on. But yeah. you, you, you must have some interesting updates on what's going to be happening. Certainly. So, uh, well, I guess the best place to start is, uh, you know, our, our festival is going to look a bit different this year. Um, we have launched uh, some subcommittees that are going to really help grow our organization and the reach that we have. Uh, so we formed a Barry subcommittee, one in yeah, West Simcoe. Um, and what we're going to be doing this year for the first time ever is we're going to be uh, taking over uh, or we're going to be organizing the Pride Parade and Festival in Barrie. I was just looking to see what, mm -hmm. what you had told me. Okay. So that'll be yeah. a, a big addition for okay. us um, in addition to all the other events. Uh, so this year we go from July 29th to August 11th. Um, we will have events. So it's like two weeks? It's two weeks. Like two two weeks. full weeks of events, you know, from as far out as Collingwood up to, uh, you know, Bosley First Nation, out to uh, Romero, down to Bradford. We cover a whole county. Uh, so there will be flag raisings are a big one. Um, that's always yeah, because been you've had... <laughs> uh, how many flag raisings? We, we did usually you? have about 20, 21. I was going to say, yeah, you've had like at least um, a, at least 20, if not yeah, more. Yeah. So we we you know we spend a few days. It like takes us four or five days to get around the county to raise those flags, uh, to kind of give visibility to the community in every little rural nook and cranny. Do you get uh, proc proclamations too? We get that? proclamations okay. too. Um, you know, so there's that visibility piece. But then we have other events as well. Uh, this year we'll see the return. It'll be our fifth annual Simcoe County Pride awards gala um, so pretty soon we'll be launching our nominations process for that so community members are totally invited to nice. nominate people for nice. the different awards um, and you have you or you can't say but you, you're looking at a new location. yes I will say we will have a new location this yeah. year and it's gonna be uh, you know quite a big announcement so people should stay tuned for that uh, because I think it's gonna be something really special to mark five years of that uh, as because well as just, just, just yep. as we're talking about that you, previously you've had it in you did so have it in Barrie Yeah, once so we had it our first year it was in Barrie. At um, the farmhouse. At the farmhouse. Um, a wonderful space. We knew we needed to grow, though. Yeah, uh, so yeah. the two years after that, we were in Midland um, at the Georgian Bay Native Friendship Center. Uh, last year, we were in Tay Township, um, Port McNichol. And this year, we're going to be somewhere closer to Barrie. We'll find out So you. So but, but what's nice about it, Brandon, is that you are moving it around. Yeah, we try, we try to move our events around to, right. to kind of share the love uh, with everyone. Um, the gala is about community. So at the end of the day, uh, if there's something that jumps out and it's like we want to host it in this area, you know, we work with the, we work with people to kind of figure out what's the best option. Um, but this year, um, it'll be great too because our theme is our history, our future, uh, notre histoire, notre avenir, and it's all about. It's about that 50 years uh, since Stonewall, uh, 50 years since the partial decriminalization of homosexuality in Canada. Right, 69, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, 1969, yeah. 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 Uh, so it, it's going uh, to be talking about honoring our past, um, all that's happened uh, in the last half century mm -hmm. with our community, the work and the fights that we've had, um, and talking about what does our future look like? You know, what are, like, let's forge it. Let's talk about, seriously, about what the future looks like. Uh, so that's what we're trying, that's going to be our inspiration for the festival. Uh, we'll also have lots of family-friendly events, like the Dust of Dawn movie night, uh, which is usually on the long weekend in August. Um, we'll have events like Candlelight Vigil. Uh, this year we're planning on doing our first ever picnic uh, Pride in the Park in Collingwood. Uh, we'll have uh, a dance party. Mm -hmm. uh, we will have the Trans Pride March, the fourth annual Trans Pride March in Aurelia. Um, and uh, I can't say the date right now for the parade, but that will be happening uh, in, in August during our festivities. In Barrie? In Barrie, yep. Oh, there will be a parade and festival. Um, you know, it'll be scaled back compared to previous prides, uh, pride festival and parades in Barrie, but it's going to be a little more grassroots and community led uh, to build a more sustainable festival, uh, as I mentioned before, um, to make sure that we're around for years to come mm -hmm. and to really help set that groundwork for the future. So there's going to be lots of celebrations this summer, um, and we're going to be looking at uh, you know, lots of events in the lead up to that. 
Uh, we're looking at doing a uh, spaghetti fundraiser dinner uh, this this spring, so that'll be coming. Um, and there will, of course, during our festivities, we have what's called affiliate events, one of them being uh, the Two-Spirit Pow Wow, uh, which is um, August 3rd and 4th. Um, and I know we'll have lots of other events happening. Yeah, I hear uh, that Yilberson is doing a family picnic on August the, 17th. The 17th, like, and like we're partnering on that, yeah. 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 So that'll be uh, just a few days after the end of our festival. Um, one of the other interesting things we'll be building on from last year is we had um, an open door service uh, at one of the local churches who's affirming. Uh, so we're hoping to expand that day and have open services throughout the county um, for people who wish to worship, um, uh, who are in faith-based communities, uh, to be able to celebrate the intersection of their identities. Um, so there's going to be something for everyone, I think. Um, and of course, we're always looking for volunteers, but with the subcommittees, we're really growing this year um, in terms of how, how much we'll be able to offer to yeah, the, the subcommittees. That's brilliant because mm -hmm. that is bringing community in. You're inviting community to be mm -hmm. part of the decision-making process, but also to be influencing mm -hmm. how the Pride events um, um, happen in terms mm -hmm. of who's involved and, and it's not just one organization deciding for everybody, it's mm -hmm. everybody has an input. Which is great. That's something unusual, isn't it, for Barry? Uh, well, it's new. Oh, for Simcoe. We, when we when we formed as an organization, we always had that vision in mind that we were going to uh, expand the organization to have subcommittees in each region of the county, mm. so that each region had its own representation and was able to organize its own events, right. uh, both throughout the year and during Pride, um, and, and really be able to. You know, we've always had. Uh, Consultation has always been a really important part of what we do. Uh, we even just were, were partway through the process of consulting on uh, police and military participation in Pride. Uh, so we did a really large survey. We had hundreds of respondents, which is actually a very sizable amount for this county uh, of LGBT community members. And uh, soon we'll be holding some town halls to finalize our report on that on that matter within our community. Mm -hmm. um, but we want to expand on that. You know, every year we always do a post-Pride survey to get feedback, uh, to understand the demographics, uh, the needs, the wants of our community. Um, but the subcommittees will allow us to do that on a more regular basis, having committees that, subcommittees that will in inform us um, and help um, expand our work, as I said, and it'll make our work better. Um, and it, ultimately, it'll, it's about community. Uh, so it'll help us serve the community better uh, and lift them up. The military and the police is interesting because Toronto Pride's had controversy around police in uniform in the parade. But I noticed last year in Barrie, some of the police cruisers actually had the rainbow flag mm -hmm. on their, on, actually on the cruiser. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking the Barrie Police Services must be an ally, I'm thinking. Allyship's complicated. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> we'll put it that way. Allyship's complicated, and that applies to everyone, including within our own community, how we're allies to each other. That's right. complicated. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, other I, the uh, the rainbow decals I saw in other places have them too in New York region. Okay. Um, and I think, um, you know, every institution within. Um, the public service should be doing work with our community and with other communities mm -hmm. to make what to enhance the the work that they do. Um, some some of the one of the great things about the process that we're doing is that uh, our process ask, you know asks how people feel about the issue, but we also ask people what's the path forward because we want to get that. Um, that strength-based approach to understand what recommendations, what concrete ways uh, can these institutions improve um, to address our community better. There's uh, no hiding the fact that there have been historical and current issues uh, with policing, uh, particularly um, in terms of uh, interactions with the LGBT community, uh, with sex workers, with HIV positive people. There's all sorts of issues that mm -hmm. um, as an organization, we have a duty to raise that issue. Um, so we've been kind of, we've tried to be proactive on this um, and talk about it. We can't be afraid to talk about it. Um, if there's one good thing that's come out of this is that people are talking about this issue. Um, and that credit really has to go to Black Lives Matter uh, Toronto for raising the issue. They've been talking about it for years, but they brought it to the forefront. Mm -hmm. um, that takes great courage to say difficult things. Um, 
uh, speak truths. And so we're now all having this conversation and thinking internally about, you know, what are what is my relationship uh, with these with these institutions, and what is the relationship with our community. So. Um, you know, we're going to keep having those conversations, even once we have a report and we've made a decision. Um, that conversation doesn't end, and it can't end, and that's true on so many other things. Um, so, you know, I'm I'm heartened by the response, uh, and that people have been willing to share so much, um, and that goes back to making the work that we do, our festival, uh, our advocacy better, uh, because we can't do that without without input. Otherwise, we're just walking in the dark. Right, and and I notice that. Um so that's the Barry Police Services, and then you mentioned military. So, mm -hmm. Base Borden has a mm -hmm. has a Pride Committee, yeah. run by Carol Tusi, I think. Yeah, or, the or uh, the Borden Pride Network. Yeah, Borden Pride. Um, that's it. You know, they 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 were actually last year uh, the Borden Pride Network was the recipient of one of our awards, uh, the Community Organization of the Year, um, and the year before that, Borden as a community was the recipient of the Community of the Year Award. Yeah. Um, they have really changed so much within their own base but also within the, the uh, within the Canadian Armed Forces the CAF um, they've kind of blown the doors wide open on uh, creating more safe and inclusive communities within the military um, but also improving and building their relationships with with civilian communities so I think they've done a lot of work um, I know that the response to the survey that we've done and the consultation we're doing has been just that, that they've done a lot of work um, and that they shouldn't give up on that because it's so important. Uh, it wasn't long ago that the whole don't ask, don't tell policy was in place. Mm -hmm. um, and I know when the, the trans military ban was announced in the US, um, it was highlighted that, you know, the Canadian military doesn't have those policies. Um, everyone is, you know, everyone's welcome, and they're working to improve that to be right. true, to make sure that uh, you know um, diversity is respected and uh, that people uh, are accepted and that they have the supports they need. Um, so they've done a lot of work. We're, we're going to be partnering with them this year in a number of ways um, on some different things. Uh, and you know, I, I'm so happy to see that they've uh, they've come together to do this work because four years ago it wasn't even a thing. Four right. and five years ago, non-existent. And you were mentioning, uh, like uh, to me anyway, that uh, twenty-eight thousand. Yeah, well, they have one of the largest training bases in Canada. Right. So that's um, a lot of and they're a lot unique, of folks. Um, yeah, so it's a big community, a very transient generally, but it's a huge community. It's, you know, comparable to the size of like Orbadonte, uh, population-wise, or Collingwood. Um, what's interesting about the base is because it's a training base, it's not active. So when you go onto base, you don't actually like see weapons and things like that. It's very much a community. There's parks, there's uh, the Canix store, which is like a shopping store. So it's like, you know, pride there's no reason pride shouldn't be there and it is uh, the flag raising last year that we did had like 250 people it was huge uh, we had a reception after that went really well so the community is changing a lot um, the culture within the within the armed forces has changed a lot um, and that's you know that's something we love to support uh, we love to support other groups that are trying to make things better uh, those partnerships are so important we can't do this work alone right. Um, right. so we've got to support each other and lift each other up uh, and that's why we we work to build partnerships with all sorts of organizations speaking of other groups so there's also uh, Georgian Pride or mm -hmm. the Georgian College so they're very active yeah uh, uh, it's Chris. It's Chris Sheridan. I remember was mm -hmm. one of the him and his sister. I met his sister just recently. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly have been keeping Pride alive at Georgian College. Mm -hmm. What about Lakehead? Yeah. So I'm actually a student at Lakehead. Um, <laughs> That's why I'm asking. Yeah. yeah so we, we have uh, you know we do have a, a Pride organization called Lakehead University at Relay Pride, um, which uh, you know for the longest time is run by um, Whitney um, Whitney Page, um, who did some really really good work. Um, it's a sm much smaller campus, only about 1,500 students, but um, you know there is pride in all sorts of places throughout the county, um, and you know building those relationships too for Georgian Pride. Uh, we've supported them in a number of ways, and they've supported us in a number of ways over mm -hmm. the years. Uh, one of the things we did is we actually um, supported them in joining Fear to Canada Pride, so that they could build skills uh, for their organization as well as uh, for you know further future endeavors once they leave. So um, those relationships uh, are ones that you know we really cherish and we try to nurture. Georgian Pride and and Lakehead. Um, 
that's somewhat transient as well because students mm -hmm. come and go, they graduate, yeah. they move on. Um, how important is their support in the work that Fierte Simcoe Pride is doing uh, in the county here, like for Pride festivities? Mm -hmm. Are they intimately in, involved in joining your subcommittees? Are, uh, do you find that they're, why, because students go away in the summer. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm, just, uh, I'm just curious. Some of them. Yeah, yeah uh, they've been really important in a lot of different things. Um, for a few years we ran, um, like a, a, health, a health and wellness day uh, where we did some workshops and uh, we partnered with Georgian Pride to host them mm. at the college. It's a space for learning, so why not? Um, and and exactly. in the future, yeah. we'll be looking for more ways to utilize those learning spaces to teach, uh, to provide education to the community. That's one of our uh, objectives as an organization. If you look at like our bylaws, um, that's one of our objectives is education uh, and bringing that to community. Um, so they're really important in that way. Um, they've helped support us. Uh, uh, Chris, as you mentioned, uh, has helped with our gala for a number of years uh, mm -hmm. because for the last few years we've cooked the food ourselves. We source I all know, the I went to one yeah. in was it buffalo you had? One yeah, year? so we've had buffalo for a few years. Yeah. Um, we, we, we source our food locally um, within 100 kilometers if we can uh, to really bring it back to home. Um, but we cook all the food, prepare, prepare all the food ourselves, do the decor, we serve the food uh, with volunteers so we get a lot of help. Um, you know, it's good for us to make sure that we're in the elementary schools and high schools and the right. college and universities to make sure that uh, students know what resources they have to access through us and through organizations like the Gilbert Center and elsewhere. Um, so it's important that we have those relationships because the youth will be the future of our organizations. Right. Um, right. You know, now and in the future, you know, there are youth on our board now um, and in the future uh, as you, up and coming people get more involved, um, you know, they're gonna take over. They're not gonna do this forever. You know, there will come a day where it's time to say, yeah. say, well, it's time to pass yeah, the torch yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and we you see paid that. your dues. Yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. I've been doing this eight years. Uh, you know, we need to make sure that we succession plan. And then again, I know I keep saying sustainability, but it's so important to build a sustainable organization and to make sure that the work we do is sustainable. We have to make sure that people aren't burning out um, that we, you know, build capacity in community. And so, you know, we're trying to balance a lot of different things and that's why we, we lean on other organizations and other groups uh, to do that because we can't do it alone. So I'm getting the sense, Brandon, from you that Pride then this summer is less about, not less about, but the, there's a lot of emphasis on education and awareness mm -hmm. and bringing to the forefront issues that are of concern for the LGBT community. But also, because sometimes people have this notion of pride is all about flaunting sexuality in mm -hmm. front of individuals or in front of you know the, the community, but it's not that at all. You're, I'm beginning to get more of a sense that it's more about it's more about understanding and appreciation and diversity, inclusivity, and acceptance more than flaunting a lifestyle, as some people might say. I don't know if it's more than. Um, like I said before, uh, and I've always, I've always believed this, and as an organization we do, pride is not one thing, and it means many things to many different people. Um, we are not a monolithic community, um, and so our organizations and our, our festivities are not one thing. Um, I think what I can say is this summer, uh, again, like back to our theme, our history of future, um, it's not really about us, you know, it's about our community. Um, and we are going to make sure that there's celebration. Um, people shouldn't be afraid to be flaunty. You know, like I think our communities had to hide for so long and even in some cases still has to hide. You should be allowed to be out and open. Um, the freedom of expression is enshrined in our Charter of Rights and Freedoms, so mm -hmm. shine on. Um, you know, and I think having a balance of that is important. Um, having that advocacy. Um, I think one of the great things about our festival this year and in past years is we can use it as a chance to talk about issues too, uh, especially at the flag raisings when we're meeting with local leaders. We get to raise those issues um, and in other capacities throughout the, the year we do that too. Um, and because there is a federal election coming this fall, uh, we'll certainly be using Pride to talk about uh, examples of issues people might want to think about um, in the upcoming election. There's still lots of things we need to address, like the blood ban um, for gay men and trans uh, trans women who are uh, assigned male at birth, um, and, and, and non-binary people who are assigned male at birth who have sex with men. Um, there's issues around, um, you know, 
non or no, unnecessary non-consensual surgeries on intersex children, the issue of conversion therapy, um, uh, issues of social and economic quality, equality, mm -hmm. um, all those issues will certainly, they're always weaved into the work we do. We're always trying to address that, but we, uh, we can't, we don't have the same uh, capacity, nor is it our necessarily solely our responsibility to do that work. The, the governments and other service organizations also have to be doing that. So um, we'll raise that during Pride, but then we'll also the celebrations, you know, the County Pride Awards, which I know you've been to before. Yes. It's really something special. Mm -hmm. It's rare that our community gets to celebrate each other. Um, and lift each other up and sit in a room at a table and share food and uh, food brings people together. So what better way um, and have local performers. So I think you'll see that balance. We are, we're trying to build that balance. So we're always looking for that feedback to help us tweak things, um, you know, and staples like the flag raisings, uh, you know, we'll stay, um, you know, things like the Trans Pride March. This year we'll have a candlelight vigil again, uh, honoring, you know, the loss of Orlando, the loss of the AIDS crisis, um, and so many other uh, things. Yeah, the um, Pulse one in... Uh... Yeah, yeah, so, uh, you know, our festival will be that balance, and that's, I think that's a, a constant, th constant thing in the background for us is we want to make sure we get as much as we can into one week, celebrating indigenous community and um, you know queer and trans indigenous black people and people of color, celebrating youth, celebrating uh, our elders, all these different things. We wanna, we always wanna bring that in, um, and that so we're always looking for people to help us do that. So will you have a, um, or will there be like a brochure coming out, or mm -hmm. how are you getting this message out into the community? How I know we're on, we're talking about it mm -hmm. tonight, but yeah. how will how will this message be? Because we're already uh, not that far off yeah. from the Pride season. Yeah, we're about four months out from from when our festival will start. Uh, one of the ways we do that is through Pride Guide. Uh, so. Because we don't want to put too much of a carbon footprint and, and kill trees, we do have a pry guy. We usually print off, uh, you know, some copies, uh, a few thousand copies, and disperse them throughout the county so people can get the pamphlets with all the information, the sponsors, the partners, the foreword, all that sort of stuff. Uh, it's also on our website, uh, www.fertesimcopride.com. We're all over social media. Uh, one of the other ways we do a really good job about is building relationships with local media. Uh, so being on the show is a good way of talking about it. Uh, talking with, you know, uh, uh, Barry Today and It Really Matters, Simcoe.com, all the radio stations uh, to get the word out. Um, and word of mouth, you know, reaching out to different organizations that we have relationships with. We say, hey, can you share this with your members? Um, and reaching out to businesses. We're going to be doing something interesting in May, uh, which stay tuned for that. But we're going to be doing something in May uh, to raise awareness about the Pride festivities coming up, but also to uh, raise awareness about supportive businesses. So, um, lots of interesting things coming down the chute. Oh, yeah. wow! And and of course, the Pride season does start in June in Toronto. I know that, mm -hmm. and I know that the positivity campaign out of um, Ottawa mm -hmm. is looking. Are you hooking up with them? That's yeah. you know, good. Yeah. Good, so good. Uh, we will be. Um, so I heard that from the Gilbertson, and I said. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask Brandon when he comes on the show if he's hooking up. Yeah, so we, I actually have a phone call with them tomorrow, um, and we're going to be, uh, we're going to be seeing how we can get them out to our festival this year. Um, I imagine the, the the parade and festival will be a good place to do that, but I'm sure there'll be other places to do that too, um, and it'll be a great chance to talk about the message of uh, undetectable, or sorry, uh, uh, undetectable equals untransmittable. Right. Um, talk about um, uh, ending stigma around HIV. Um, all those sort of things, right, and right. you know, as an organization, we endorsed the U equals U campaign. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. So I'm really excited about that partnership, um, and you know, we love to bring people in to educate um, and to talk about those sort of things. Yeah, I know the um, Gilbert Center is working on a national HIV testing mm -hmm. day in June, June yep. 27th, I think it is, and they're working on their graphics. And Randy Davis from that center uh, showed me some of the graphics they're working on, which is really interesting. Mm -hmm. They're working with an organization out of, uh, well, north of here. I can't remember. <laughs> Oops. Uh, anyway, it's it's interesting that that because you've mentioned HIV quite a few times uh, in our in our chat about how important it is, the U equals U message, how important it is for Pride, and I'm glad and I'm, I'm hearing this from you that 
you're not just you're you're branching out just the more than just pride you're bringing in other issues within the pride community community like HIV, U equals U, the trans you've talked about, uh, you know, confirming surgeries that, that aren't done in Ontario. They're only done in Montreal at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and so these are things, concerns, health issues, accessing uh, great medical uh, care within Simcoe County as opposed to going for, for example, HIV specialists that are mostly located in Toronto and it's hard mm -hmm. for some people to get there. And so I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled to hear that that Fierty Simcoe Pride is much more than just pride, but it's 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 bringing in other issues that affect the community. Mm -hmm. And uh, and congratulations on that. I, I, I think it's important, and I, and I'm glad to see that that you're doing it, and that it's part of what Fierty Simcoe Pride is about. Mm -hmm. So con congratulations on that. That's good. We we try our best to be intersectional approach, and yep. that word gets thrown around all the time, intersectionality. But we really do try to work on that. We recognize that. Uh, we have certain responsibilities to talk about issues, to raise awareness, yeah. to celebrate as well, um, and, and not just celebrate the, the mainstream of what you see, but all the intersections of our community. Um, so we try to bring that into our work, uh, and, and we're, we're unique, in, and a lot of prides are do in transition phase as well, but we don't just do the Pride Festival, we do year-round events exactly. and activities and services. Um, so bringing in those discussions on other issues about uh, accessibility, disability justice, uh, reconciliation, arts, culture, you know, sex work, HIV, healthcare, you name it. If it's related in some way, if it's an intersection of our community, we need to talk about it. Yeah, I know because you, uh, your organization did a great thing this is past December before Christmas. Yeah, yeah. 2018, you had a, a great dinner, a mm -hmm. turkey dinner, and it was all, it was all hosted by Fierty. Mm -hmm. And I think the Gilbert Center helped out a bit. Yeah. And it was all complimentary, and it was great, because I know mm -hmm. Rosa Mead has been doing it for years. Mm -hmm. Well, she does it at Thanksgiving. Does she do it Thanksgiving, at Thanksgiving, Easter, Easter, and, uh, and, and, and Christmas? Christmas. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, Brandon. I know it's a couple of months away, so I hope yeah. you can come back on as you, sure we get closer to the Pride season and uh, give us even more details and tantalizing details about your programming and what's going to be happening during Pride. Sure. So thank you very much thank for you coming. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, thank you for tuning in and see you next week.